First, there was the Age of Darkness. Garai, the eldest and most powerful of the gods, created his own dominion, Velutan, born amidst the void, far from Ates. For hundreds of thousands of years, only darkness and the silence of nothingness reigned. The silence was shattered with the tears of Sunari, marking the opening of the Seven Gates. This event heralded the Age of Dragons, a time when these majestic creatures ruled Velutan for millennia. Following this era was the Age of Velantars, a golden period that brought a century of peace. However, with the death of the High King Velantiathus Martel, this peace unraveled, plunging Velutan back into chaos. The first signs of the creeping dread began to emerge. Atropolis, a city like a shining pearl in the sea, lay nestled in the shadow of the Forgul Mountains, to the south of Velutan. At the dawn of the age of Deascala, when the initial traces of dread became evident, the city was already weary and broken. The dread had gradually drained the vitality and lineage of its people over generations. During the Great War, Gozar de Capithus, the Citadel Emperor's chief mage, Ilmi, crafted a magical substance called Zephyr. In exchange for solemn oaths sworn by Atropolis to the Infernum Order, Zephyr was created to shield human bodies from the effects of the dread. This enchanted liquid was distributed in barrels along the inner and outer borders of Atropolis's surrounding island, forming a protective barrier. Zephyr became the city's lifeline against the creeping darkness. Over the decades, Zephyr, a magical substance that integrated itself into the bodies and blood of every living being it touched, became a vital part of life on the Outer Rim. For centuries, it provided protection against the dread. However, this protection came at a price. Passed down through generations, Zephyr began to weaken the bloodlines children were born frail and most succumbed to its effects before reaching the age of 30. In desperation, the ruler of Atropolis turned to Citradel once more, this time seeking salvation not from the dread, but from Zephyr itself. Ilmi, who had originally imbued Atropolis with Zephyr, created an antidote for those poisoned by prolonged exposure. This antidote was named Zadar, in honor of Yunazadar, the reigning king of Atropolis at the time. With Zadar, both the Outer Rim population and the Atropolis Aryans were finally freed from the dual perils of the Dread and Zephyr. Over the following years, the dwindling population began to recover, and healthy children were born once more. Centuries later, when Citradel ignited the Radeli beacon atop the Forgul Mountains, the flow of Dread from the east diminished and was eventually eradicated. By the time the Age of Deascalar gave way to the Age of Rindorath, the dread had been entirely purged from the region. Yet, the scars of those dark times endured. The poison that had seeped into the bloodlines of Atropolis's people, a residual effect of Zephyr, left a permanent haunting legacy. This shadow of the past became an unshakable part of their existence, a chilling reminder of the price they paid to survive. The city in the present day was ruled by a force known as the Everlasting Flame. This force kept the populace unified under oppression and inquisitorial laws, but pain and bloodshed reigned supreme. Those showing the most severe symptoms of the Zephyr disease were deemed beyond saving and were purified through a ritual called the Flame of Submission, where they were burned alive. The people's only hope lay with the Vandel Centurion Order. The Vandel Centurion Order served as an elite unit of 100 soldiers under the Guardians of the Everlasting Flame. Each soldier risked their life to ensure the safety of the people and protect them. However, the Order had long grown weary of the atrocities committed by the Everlasting Flame. 
They dreamed of bringing prosperity to the people and finding a permanent cure for the disease. Among its members were brave soldiers who secretly provided Zidar, a vital remedy, to the sick, preventing them from being sent to the flame of submission. Chief Guardian Yonard was increasingly disturbed by the Order's connection with the people and the growing spirit of rebellion and resistance. Yonard believed that only obedient soldiers were worthy of becoming true guardians of the everlasting flame. One day, while on duty at the docks, a major uprising erupted. Fishermen had risen in defiance of the everlasting flame, and chaos ensued at the harbor. The Vandal Centurion Order, tasked with quelling the rebellion, fell into a trap set by Yonard. A partially constructed galley was deliberately collapsed onto the Order's members as part of his scheme. Many soldiers fell into the toxic sea, sustaining severe injuries and succumbing to the deadly poison known as Zephyr. The Order suffered a massive blow, both physically and mentally. Soldiers who tried to save their comrades were met with Yonard's order for the flame of submission. Among the soldiers, Onthor Guthag, Mivel, and Falkenvist fought desperately to save their friends. However, Yonard commanded that their injured comrades be burned in the flame of submission. This public display of the ritual further fueled the rebellion. The few surviving members of the Vandel Centurion Order witnessed the cries for help from the people and the revolutionary leaders rising among them. Onthor, Mivel, and Falcon defied the guards, joining forces with the people to rescue those cast into the fire. Yet, the guards' brutality inflicted heavy losses on the crowd. As night fell, only a handful of the Order's members remained by the fire, mourning in silence. Among the ashes of the burned bodies, they noticed a hand move, a miraculous survivor. It was Uldra Cathaster. Falcon Vist carried her burned and broken body back to his home, embarking on a risky treatment using his own blood. He asked Onthor and Mivel to retrieve a few intact bodies from the piles of corpses. Without hesitation, they fulfilled his request. Despite days of effort, the treatment showed no results. Just as all hope seemed lost, the revolutionary leader Cassiel arrived with a forgotten spell from the ancient parchments of Dacha, life siphoning. Uldera was brought back to life through the sacrifices of her comrades and Cassiel's aid. However, the Vandel Centurion Order was no longer the same. Its members resolved to take a new path to save the people. Soon, they faced a formidable trial. Rumors spread that the Atropolis Council was about to make a decisive ruling. If the decision passed, the White Seal would be completed and the supply of Zidar would be cut off entirely. The Vandal Centurion Order prepared for their greatest battle yet, a fight not only for survival, but for the freedom and future of their people.